Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, and I am calling today Grandmama Monday. I know Sparky. Sparky doesn't have a grandmama, but those of you who do have grandparents, you know that they're very special. And so today we're going to celebrate grandmothers because I had a very, very special grandmother. Sadly, she's no longer with us, but I love the memories of her. And so I want to share some grandmother stories with you today. So we're going to get started with Shell Silverstein's Where the Sidewalk Ends. And a lot of grandparents like to teach us things like, oh, being polite. And so this is called making a list. I'm making a list of things I must say for politeness. And goodness and kindness and gentleness, sweetness and rightness. Hello. Pardon me. How are you? Excuse me? Bless you. May I? Thank you. Goodbye. And if there's some I've forgotten, please stick them in your eye. <laughs> there you have it. That is, I'm making a list. Look at that nice fountain pen. Isn't that a great fountain pen? <laughs> now, a fountain pen is one that I'm sure that you guys don't, have never used before, but they're pretty cool. They're an old, old-fashioned pen that you had to fill with ink. Don't have to do that anymore. Now our pens fill themselves. Well, Sparky, are you ready to get started? I think so. Sparky's ready to say hello. He had a long weekend without you guys. He always misses you. So let's get started and say hello. Hello, how are you? Oh, hello. How are you? Oh, hello. How are you? I'm just fine today. I'm glad to see you. So glad to see you. Well, what do you say we get today started with a big stretch? Stretch, stretch, stretch as tall as you can, and stretch, stretch, stretch as tall as you can. Stretch, stretch, stretch as tall as you can. I'm so glad to see you. Okay, what do you say? Let's really get the blood moving, and let's reach down and touch those toes. Reach right down and touch your toes, and reach right down and touch your toes, and reach right down and touch your toes. I'm so glad to see you. What time, Sparky? Oh, Sparky says let's jump up and down. Okay, let's do it. You want to jump up and down, Sparky? Okay, here we go. Jump up and down, one, two, three, and jump up and down with Sparky and me, and jump up and down, one, two, three. I'm so glad to see you. Okay, very good. Let's make some funny faces. I'm so glad to see you. All right, Sparky says, let's wave hello. Hello, how are you? Oh, hello. How are you? Oh, hello. Thank you for inviting Sparky and myself in today. And my name is Sophie and this is Sparky. And we've got some stories today about grandmothers. So Sparky, shall we get started with our stories? Mm-hmm. And a big thank you to Delilah and to JC because they have lent me this big giant book of stories. And I need it because you guys are running out of stories. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And this is from a storybook called Spotlight on Literacy. It has a ton of stories in it. This one is called Luca's Quilt. And this is by Georgia Gubak. And that is Luca's Quilt. And look how pretty this is. Look at that. Isn't that really me? Oh, I love that. Isn't that gorgeous? My grandmama used to make um, quilts, as did my mom. Luca's Quilt. My tutu lives with us. Tutu, that's Hawaiian for grandmother. Tutu takes care of me while mom and dad work. We do lots of things together. I like that, and so does tutu. But all that changed when the quilt came along. Ooh, I wonder what that means, huh? 
What an amazing place to live, huh? Hawaii? One morning, Tutu said, I had a dream last night. I dreamed I was in a beautiful garden. There were flowers everywhere, and it gave me idea for a quilt. This quilt be for, will be for you, Luca. I made a quilt for your mom, and now it's your turn. Will it have flowers on it? I asked. Oh, yes, Tutu replied. It's a flower garden. There will be all kinds of flowers. It's going to be so pretty, I said. It will take a long time to make, said Tutu. You'll have to be patient. That's okay, I said. I can help. Mm, look, there's the whole family in the kitchen and setting the table. Aren't these beautiful pictures? After breakfast, Tutu and I went to the fabric store. Choose a color, said Tutu. There were so many pretty colors. I like that yellow, I said, and that pink, and some of that blue, and the lavender, and this orange is nice. Tutu laughed. Oh, not so fast, she said. Choose one color, just one. Oh, well, how can it be a flower garden if there's just one color, I asked. Oh, you'll see, said Tutu. Just one color. Green. I chose green because flowers have green leaves. The flower colors would come later. Look at that neat fabric store. Doesn't that look like fun? I would love to go to a fabric store like that. Tutu sketched and cut and pinned and basted, and I got to help. This quilt is going to be so pretty, I kept thinking. I could hardly wait for the flowers. At last, Tutu put the quilt in the quilting frame. Serious work now, she said, and I knew I wasn't big enough to help anymore. When are the flowers coming, Tutu? I'd ask. She'd smile and answer, you'll see, Luca, you'll see. So see how she's got it all drawn out. Quilts are done by hand. They're stitched with tiny little stitches, with little pieces of fabric. Then one day, a long time after, Tutu took the quilt off the frame. She ironed it and put it on my bed. For you, Luca, she said. The flowers? There were no flowers. Where are the flowers? I cried. Here, said Tutu. See, here's Amaryllis. And here's Ginger, and over here is Harkadanya. Well, everything's white, I said. How can these be flowers with no pretty flower colors? Oh, this is the way we make our quilts, said Tutu. Two colors. It's our island's tradition. You chose green, remember? Well, I thought the green was for the leaves, I cried. All the flowers in our gardens are all in colors. It can't be a flower garden if the flowers are white. Oh dear. It seems that there's been a misunderstanding between Tutu and Luca, huh? Sometimes people don't understand each other's thoughts. One person thinks one way and another person thinks another way. Tutu's eyes got watery and she quietly turned and went to her room and shut the door. I looked at Tutu's quilt again I thought it was going to be so pretty, and all it was was white. I sat down and cried. Hmm. What's sad here is that Tutu meant this to be a beautiful gift, and then Luca is very upset by the gift. Things changed after that. Tutu and I used to be such good friends, and now we had nothing to say to each other. We didn't do things together anymore, and all because of a quilt. It's going to stay like this forever, I thought. It is awful. Look, there's Tutu and Luca going their separate ways. But Tutu surprised me. A few days later, she said, today is Lay Day. You've never been to a Lay Day celebration, Luca. Let's declare a truce and see what's going on in the park. What's a truce? I asked. 
That's when people put aside their differences and come together again for a little while, Tutu answered. I didn't see how it was going to work, but it was worth a try. Okay, I said. I filled the water jug and Tutu got a tatami mat and we stopped at Aiko's to buy bento for our picnic. By the time the bus came, it was almost beginning to feel like old times. Look at those amazing bento boxes. Aren't those cool? Those are filled with sushi, rice and fish and seaweed. Mm. There was so much going on at the park. We listened to the music and we watched the dancing. We spread our mat under a tree and ate our bento and Tutu treated me to a shave ice. Mm, look at that fabulous park. Oh, shave ice is one of my favorite things about Hawaii. Especially if you get the bean paste in the bottom with the ice cream. Later, we came to a place where kids were making lays. Come, said the lady, make a lay. Is it okay, Tutu? I asked. Go ahead, said Tutu. The lady got me started. She gave me a long needle and strong thread and showed me how to string the flowers together. Mm, look at everybody sitting on their mats and making their beautiful lays. It makes sense that you would make a lei on lei day, huh? A lei is a beautiful necklace made out of flowers. There were all kinds of blossoms. They were in cardboard boxes with wet newspaper all around to keep them fresh. I chose a pink flower. Next, I added a yellow, then an orange, then a lavender. Oh, Tutu laughed. No, 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 not that way, Luca. Choose one color, maybe two, but no more than two. I could feel myself getting angry, and I tried not to. I was remembering our truce. Tutu, I said, it's my lay. But Tutu began and then she stopped. She was remembering our truce too and she didn't say another word. It sounds like the truce was a good idea between Luca and Tutu, huh? Things got better at once. I didn't feel angry anymore and I made the lay my way. It turned out very pretty, and I got to keep it and wear it home. So the truce worked, and I felt happy. I'm glad you had that truce idea, Tutu, I said. I had a good time. So did I, Tutu answered. There they are riding home on the bus. Isn't that fun? By bedtime, the happy feeling was still with me. I looked at Tutu's quilt again. Maybe a white flower garden wasn't so bad. I snuggled underneath her quilt and fell asleep. The next day, Tutu said, Luca, I was looking at your lay last night and I saw your flower garden in it and it gave me an idea. What do you think the idea is going to be? I got to help with Tutu's idea. I chose pretty flower colors from her scrap baskets and then I helped her sketch and cut and baste. And then Tutu did the sewing and the quilting. A long time later, after my pretty flower lay had dried out and turned brown, Tutu called me. We went into my bedroom and there, like magic, all the flowers I had dreamed of in a special quilted lay. Just for you, Luca, said Tutu. Now you have all your flowers and all your colors. <gasps> it's so pretty, I cried. And all at once I was hugging Tutu and she was hugging me back and everything was better again. Do you see the lay? It's a circle of beautiful flowers and it can go on top, like a big circle all sewn together and it lays on top so that it makes the beautiful colors on top of the beautiful quilt. I like my quilt a lot now. Sometimes I, I, sometimes I have it plain, my white flower garden, and sometimes I put Tutu's quilt lay on top and have my flower garden in color. I like it both ways, but what I like most is that Tutu and I are friends again, and I can tell Tutu likes that best of all, too. <laughs> and there's Tutu and Luca reading in bed. Isn't that fun? And that is called Luca's Quilt. And once again, that is by, let me get the name, that is by Georgia Gubach. And it's called Luca's Quilt. And I don't know if you can see here, but if you look around the outer edges, 
you can see that there is a quilt that is just made out of white stitches. It's white fabric with white stitches to make beautiful white flowers. And that is the way that they made them on the island that Luca's grandma Tutu lived on. They just do two colors. One would be the white stitching, and then the other would be a color. Well, I know this isn't a song about grandmothers, but it is about papas. It's about whiskers. I have a dear old daddy for whom I nightly pray. He has a set of whiskers that are always in the way. Oh, they're always in the way. The horse eats them for hay. They hide their dirt in daddy's shirt. They're always in the way. Around the supper table, we make a happy group. Until my dear father's whiskers get tangled in the soup. Oh, they're always in the way. The horse eats them for hay. They hide their dirt in daddy's shirt. They're always in the way. Father had a strong back, but now it's all caved in. He stepped upon his whiskers and walked upon his chin. Oh, they're always in the way. The horse eats them for hay. They hide their dirt in daddy's shirt. They're always in the way. song about family, isn't it? Well, the next story that I want to read you is from the Epic app, and this is called I Love You, Grandma, and this is by Jillian Harker with illustrations by Christina Stevenson. It's called I Love You, Grandma. I love you, Grandma. This is about two bears. Little Bear and Grandma were eating breakfast. Grandma, asked Little Bear suddenly, why do I have such a big nose? To help you find food, Grandma told him. But I just look around and found these berries, argued Little Bears. Ah, replied Grandma, food isn't always easy to see. But there's Little Bear and he's got his very big nose. Let's see Grandma, shall we? There's Grandma. Isn't she cute? Let's see, if we put it this way, you'll be able to see the whole picture. And there they are together. Isn't that cute? Grandma led Little Bear down to the river. There they go, they're going down to the river. Hmm, can you see anything to eat? She asked. Little Bear shook his head. Can you smell anything? Grandma added. Food, answered Little Bear. Then use your nose to find it, Grandma told him. And there they are, down at the water's edge. Little Bear followed his nose to some stones on the riverbank. He turned one over. A fish, he laughed. Yummy! Look, he found a little fish under a rock. And he wouldn't have found that if he didn't have his nose. Dinner, smiled Grandma. Good job, little bear. I love you, Grandma, little bear whispered in her ear. Grandma, asked little bear suddenly, why do I have such sharp claws? Oh, to help you find food, came the reply. But you told me I have a nose for that, said Little Bear, surprised. <laughs> that could be a little confusing, huh? Oh, said Grandma, sometimes your nose leads you to food, but you still have to work to get it. I wonder what that means, huh? 
She took Little Bear into the woods. Sniff the air, she reminded him. Little Bear started to follow his nose. He stopped at a fallen tree. I can smell food, Little Bear said. I still can't see it, but I know it's here. You need to use your claws, Grandma told him. Hmm, what do you think Little Bear's gonna find? Little Bear dug his sharp claws into the bark. He broke off a small piece. <gasps> Ants, he laughed. Oh, delicious. Lunch, smiled Grandma. Good work, Little Bear. I love you, Grandma, Little Bear yelled. Grandma, asked Little Bear suddenly, why do I have such a long tongue? Oh, to help you find food, Grandma said at once. But you told me that I have a nose and claws to do that, said Little Bear surprised. Sometimes the best food is hard to reach, Grandma told him. Little Bear has lots of questions, doesn't he? He's a very curious bear. She took Little Bear to a clearing. Smell the air, Grandma said. Little Bear sniffed hard. He lifted his nose. Food, he told Grandma. A huge bee's nest hung from a branch above him. <laughs> look at him looking up there, huh? I know what to do, laughed Little Bear. Look at me, he called. He hooked the nest with his sharp claws, lifted it down, and opened it up. Honey, he smiled. Mm. Supper, said Grandma, but Little Bear's claws couldn't reach the food. Mmm, Little Bear needed a little help to get up to that honey, uh, didn't he? So what are you going to do now? asked Grandma. Use my long tongue, laughed Little Bear. And that's just what he did. Brilliant, Little Bear, laughed Grandma. Let's get that closer so you can see those fun pictures. Look at Little Bear sticking out his tongue. Bah. Grandma, how do you know so many things? Asked Little Bear suddenly. Oh, that's easy, Grandma smiled. When I was small, I was curious, just like you, she said. You ask so many questions, you'll soon know lots of things, too. And she hugged Little Bear tight. <laughs> See, it's good to ask questions. Especially when you have somebody special in your life that likes to answer them. Could be a teacher, or a grandma, or a grandpa, or a mom, or a dad, or a friend. Do you know I love you, Grandma? asked Little Bear. I do, answered Grandma. She stroked Little Bear's sticky head. And you know I love you too, she said. See, it doesn't really matter if they're related to you as long as they love you. Hmm. And here's the last picture, which is of the beautiful place where they live. And there you have it. I love you, Grandma. And that was by Jillian Harker. And Daniel, well, I'm not sure who drew the pictures because I can't get back to the front, sorry. But it was by, it's, it, it's in the show notes. <laughs> That's the one thing with Epic, when you get to the end of the book, it doesn't take you right back to the beginning. So I, I can't reiterate who the illustrator was and the author, sorry about that. But it is in the show notes. Wasn't that a fun story? Thank you, Epic, for your wonderful app that allows me to expand my library, which is ever shrinking. Well. My friend Sparky would like you to help sing a song about the bear going over the mountain. And it goes like this. Oh, the bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain to see what he could see. 
to see what he could see, to see what he could see. Oh, the bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain to see what he could see. Now, if you want to help and do that too, when I say see what you can see, you can do that as well, just like Sparky did. And if you want to march like you're going up the mountain, you can do that too. Let me grab my guitar and we will play. Oh, the bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain, bear went over the mountain to see what he could see, to see what he could see, to see what he could see. Oh, the bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain, bear went over the mountain to see what he could see, but all that he could see, but all that he could see was the other side of the mountain, the other side of the mountain, the other side of the mountain, was all that he could see. Well, there you have it. There's the bear going over the mountain and seeing what he could see. And what did he see? The other side of the mountain. Well, I have one last story for you, and that is from A. a. Milne's When We Were Very Young, with decorations by Ernest H. Shepard. And this is called At the Zoo, which is a great place for a grandparent to take you. <laughs> That's why I have this story. <laughs> there are lions and roaring tigers and enormous camels and things. There are biffalo, buffalo, bisons and a great big bear with wings. There's a sort of tiny potamus and a tiny noceros too, but I gave buns to the elephant when I went down to the zoo. Look, there's the potamus type of a thing, I think. There are badgers and bidgers and bodgers and a superintendent's house. There are masses of goats and a polar and different kinds of a mouse. And I think there's a sort of something which is called a wallabaloo. But I gave buns to the elephant when I went down to the zoo. If you try to talk to a bison, he never quite understands. You can't shake hands with a ming mingo. He doesn't like shaking hands. And lions and roaring tigers hate saying, how do you do? But I gave buns to the elephant when I went down to the zoo. <laughs> and here's a bison-y, bison-y, boosony kind of a thing. He's got his tongue out. Maybe he wants a bun too. Do you think you should give buns to the elephant if you go down to the zoo? Probably not, unless the zookeeper gives them to you. But the zoo is a great place to go with friends and family. And if you've got a grandparent, that's a great place to go with your grandparents. Well, Sparky would like to say goodbye because believe it or not, we're already at the end of story time. Can you believe it, Sparky? No, I know it goes so fast. Well, Sparky would like to play, so I'm going to put him in my pocket here. And we are going to say goodbye. Sparky's arm got caught. Okay, Spark, here we go. Look on up at everybody. And let's wave goodbye. Oh, goodbye, Bella. Goodbye, James. Goodbye, Delilah. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, JC. Goodbye, Maya. Goodbye, Isabella. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, Gabriella. Goodbye, Lillian. Goodbye, Madeline. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, Charlotte. Goodbye, Jalen. Goodbye, Ollie. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, Dan. Shelby.
me. Goodbye, Francine. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, Eli. Goodbye, Pax. Goodbye, Frigelica. I'll see you all next time. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining Sparky and myself for story time today. We will be back on Wednesday with some more stories and songs. In the meantime, Sparky would like to give you a high three and me a high five. And if you would like a hug, take one hand, put it on your shoulder, take the other hand, put it on your other shoulder, and squeeze really, 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 really tight. Ah, that's a big hug from me and Sparky to you. We'll see you on Wednesday. Bye, everybody.